It's time to play Would You Rather. Are you oh, ready? I don't want to play. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I like that Would you game. rather not play? <laughs> I like this game. I don't like the three name the three things game. It makes me stressed out. If I was going to do TV, because I was never not going to be myself. Where are the people who are a little bit different? You're sitting next to one on the couch. So let's just say that. Be yourself, but not too much of yourself. Now, here's Jason. Jace, how y'all doing, audience? How you doing? Good? Thank you for being here. Well, friends, let us start with this. Uh, skinny living in the nation's capital. Yeah, you've got to see this house for sale. You can buy it right now in D.C. Look at this. Ladies and gentlemen, it's only six feet wide. What? That's right. Six feet wide. That's basically me, just FYI. <laughs> The skinny home features one bedroom, a kitchen, a living room, and one and a half bathrooms. Now that's uh, what I don't understand. Anyway, it also has an outdoor space that's five feet wide. The 600 square foot home is on the market and it can be yours for $600,000. That's right. That's, that's uh, $100,000 a foot. That's right. <laughs> And the only person on our staff that could sleep in that house comfortably is Bjorn and Aaron. Those are the only two people that can sleep. Yeah. <laughs> Let's get started. Roll the music, Leo. Let's do this. Six hundred thousand. That's right. Like what? No, I yeah. can't. Like you couldn't even. You literally, you literally could not lay horizontally in there. No, people. I, I get this a lot. People think. Uh, I don't know if I appear a shorter on television, but I'm <laughs> and fatter, I guess. But yeah, but I. Uh, don't we all? Don't we all? I do still have people going. Oh, you just look um, a lot worse on television. That you look be, so yeah. much better in person. And you look so much better in person. People do say anyway. Thanks. Uh, but no, I'm. I am taller. I, uh, I'm 6'1", so I could not sleep comfortably in that home. No. No, I could not Literally. stretch out. <laughs> no. Well, I would... <laughs> what, Eric? But, like, where's the best? Sideways, sleep the long way. But oh, yeah, I guess I could sleep the long way. I guess, yeah, I know, but I... Yeah. That's not as fun to what, think about. What, are you from Indiana? That's not as fun to think about. <laughs> no, no, it's not. not. No, it's... I know. Uh, I know. No. Uh, guys, again, uh, <laughs> the 80s, Indiana, yeah. I just, you know, I... I yeah, yeah. I have good teachers. Word problems are hard. I know. <laughs> it's early. I'm not good at math. I mean, the whole I barrage know. of things. Yeah, I, I know. know. It's don't, all right. It's all right. That. Okay. <laughs> I got to tell you. I got to tell you. I love not all internet comments, but I love the funny ones. So we have a thing. It's not run by us. We have nothing to do with it. It is uh, the Jason Show Fan Club on Facebook. Now, this thing popped up in season one of our show. We've been on the show nine years. Again, not run by us. There are good people on there, uh, people, good people that run it. I don't engage a lot only because I don't like, if people get spicy or saucy, I don't need that in the old noggin. So I just, you know, but when good comments are set on there, it gets my attention. Mm -hmm. Like one comment. Do we have a picture of it? Do we have a graphic? Look at this. 
Executive producer Jeff is so very manly. I would, I, I would, no, no, audience, no, audience. It's the second part that cracks me up. I'd take him out for soup and salad. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> and, then, and then it continued. Then a woman uh, commented and said, oh, I agree. Jeff is manly. <laughs> yeah. And then the one that uh, photographer Eric just saw this this morning, and this cracked me up. Uh, where is it, Eric? You just texted it to me. A woman wrote, um, I won't say her name, but another woman commented again and said, have I got a daughter for you? <laughs> well, well, I mean, how, how manly well, am ma I? <laughs> well, ma'am, have I got a surprise for you? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Is I'm, your daughter's name Bill? I'm, I'm yeah. no longer. <laughs> <laughs> Been great. Been great. Been no Jeff longer. will meet you at the Golden Corral. That's right. Yeah. Oh, God. Our EP is so manly, Kendall. Sorry, Jeff. I know. Jeff goes, we get in the meeting, and Jeff goes, we're not going to do this in, this is called desk chat. Yeah. That's what we call this. Right. He goes, we're not going to do this in desk chat. Photographer Eric and I go, oh, oh yes, yes, we, we are. are. <laughs> Look at his wrap, wrap it up, wrap. wrap it up. <laughs> Make it quick. <laughs> if you would like to date Manly Jeff, that's right, yeah. <laughs> Let's get started, everybody. Time for the hot dish. Roll it, Leo. Let's do this. <laughs> I don't know if I'll be able to do the show with that manliness over there. <laughs> anyway, the first up, the next James Bond. Almost. Listen to this. Millions of people are loving a new movie trailer for a movie called Bond 26. It features Henry Cavill as 007. Ooh. Margot Robbie as a Bond girl. Mm. But friends, there's a problem. It's as fake as a $3 bill. Oh. Look, look at this. This is not, look. We are not like the others. We can have much more than anyone else. The problem is that the world is too small. For both of us. Hello, James Bond. Uh, right there, right there. Okay, right there. I would have known it was fake with that ugly font right there. That's right there, yeah. I'm really big on fonts. That's tacky. That's from 96, 97. That, no, yeah, that's not in trend right now. <laughs> the trailer was created with AI, and as of today, it's been uh, viewed by more than two and a half million people. Million, uh, many people in the comments are hoping uh, Henry is actually casted, uh, cast as James Bond. But rumors are, uh, we, we told you this, it's, it's going to go to Aaron Taylor Johnson. <laughs> and it should. I like Henry Cavill, but the problem is, here's part of the problem. Not that you can't play two big characters. Henry was Superman. <laughs> you know what I mean? He's already a big, he's already been a big character. Yeah. I want to see Aaron Taylor Johnson as uh, James Bond, but But yeah. Henry Cavill also was The Witcher and stepped away from The Witcher, and we don't really know why because it was really popular on Netflix. So maybe, maybe he has interest. He wanted to do it in 06, and they said he was too young. Yeah, now he's so just the right age. He's just. I mean, I would love it too. Isn't that weird though that they can make a trailer? It looks pretty good up until the font. Well, it and looked, the weird like face yeah, stuff. Yeah, up until sometimes. the yeah. All I know is that is a manly man right there. That is oh, a real that is manly, a manly man. man. That's right, yeah. He's no Jeff, but yeah. Yeah. <laughs> By the way, if the family that runs Bond is uh, listening, Jeff is available too. He can play Bond. That's right. Jeff can do a British accent. It's a really good one. It's a too. really good one too, yeah. <laughs> I'm manly. Uh, next up, only hours to go until we get our first listen of Taylor Swift's new album. But some Swifties may have gotten an illegal sneak peek. That's right. Snippets from 17 songs started circulating online Wednesday. Reports are, reports are, they were taken from a Google Drive link. That's right. Taylor previously said her new album called their Tor uh, Tortured Dead Poets 
no. department order of the phoenix uh yeah i don't know it's a very long um yeah the dead poet what is it called it's the, the poet the poets. tortured poets? poets department contains 17 tracks it's not clear if the songs are real or again if this leak is created by ai diehard fans are urging urging Swifties to report all links to President Biden if they see them. That's right. This is a call. national tragedy. Get on it. Call any ex-president. I call Mr. Trump. <laughs> call Mr. Clinton. Swift's new album comes out uh, midnight on Thursday night. So Bjorn is our resident Swifty. Yes. And he said, girl, p the fans are so mad. Psychotic. They <laughs> are so mad. They don't want people. They're like, how dare you? If you're a real fan, they you will listen. not download this link. Uh -huh. You won't do it. <laughs> so of course Bjorn did. Yes. That's right, yes. He said it's all legit. <laughs> did he actually? Yeah, Leo, take five. President Biden, his name is Bjorn. <laughs> You can find him no. here at Fox 9. Exactly. <laughs> no, I, I, this is, but I, 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 I'm not going to make too much fun of the Swifties. No. Because as a person that loves things big, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, you guys see it. I love that these fans can get excited. The world is so bad right now right. that if these fans are having fun, I remember going to uh, Record Town uh, in 91 to get Rhythm Nation by mm -hmm. Janet Jackson. If these fans, yeah, right? If these fans look forward to Taylor Swift, yeah. good on them. Right. You look forward to this and don't let anybody hate on you. Mm -hmm. You get excited. You stay up to midnight. You have a blast, everybody. You do. You we'll do be, you. You do you. We'll be right back. Back in a moment, everybody. Stay right there. Back in a moment. Club. We're going to get that pen sashing up to $20 a free play at Grand Casino. Happy birthday. Well, happy birthday, everybody. Come celebrate with us. Go to uh, uh, event, uh, eventbrite.com or the Eventbrite app and sign up. Well, this year marks, oh, oh, 40 years since Footloose came out. Everybody, my generation, we're feeling real old right about now. Well, last night, John Lithgow, uh, you know, he was in the movie, he was the, the preacher, uh, talked about making the movie on The Late Show with Stephen Colbert. He played the father in the movie, but off screen, he said he was the one starting the parties with the rest of the cast. Watch this. There we were in, in a tidy little Provo, Utah, and we kind of were restless uh, being considered the old farts. And we sort of reacted to that. It was in my pathetic little motel room. I threw all the parties. Mm -hmm. And all the kids would come in, we would dance, you know, we did Soul Train, and they were amazed at us. Most particularly when one night we tore off all our clothes and jumped into the motel swimming pool. <laughs> they were absolutely appalled. <laughs> and the next morning, our producer, Danny Melnick, he put up a mem memo, no more of that. <laughs> we don't want to get kicked out of Provo. No. Turns out we were 10 times cooler than the kids. Oh, wow. <laughs> and to this very day. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Don't want to get kicked out of Utah. John also shared a story about the impact of Footloose. He was working with an actor on the hit TV show, y'all remember Third Rock from the Sun, when the actor told him a really moving story. Listen to this. Uh, I've, been, I've been wanting to tell you this, Mr. Lithgow. I, I, I'm, I'm from a little town in, my, in Alabama. And my daddy was the Baptist minister in that town. We couldn't dance. We couldn't hear rock and roll. I, I went to see Footloose when it came to town, and you were my daddy. <laughs> and I took my daddy to that movie the next night without telling him anything about it. By this time, tears were rolling down his cheeks. He said, I just wanted you to know that because of your performance, I was the first of six children to be allowed to go to his prom. And I thought, oh my God. I believe it. I believe it. It was based on a true, 
It was based on a real town. I mean, it's, you know, fictionalized, but it was based on a real thing. John is part of a new show, by the way, on PBS promoting the power of arts education. Personally, I was, uh, that was 84, so I would have been 10. My cousin Stan, who's like my brother, uh, I loved that movie. He uh, did his hair like Ren McCormick. Uh, he dressed like Ren McCormick. And I went to see that movie about 50 times. I'm not joking. And every time, and if you've seen the movie, you know the scene. Every single time that at the school board meeting at the very end, when that one mother that was like, meh, 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 and then the good mother stood, uh, sit, sit, went like this and the camera cut her and she goes, sit down, Marion. Everybody clapped in that theater. <laughs> sit down, Marion. <laughs> Kids shouldn't dance. Mah, mah, mah. Sit down, woman. Yeah, it was great. Oh, everybody in LaPorte, Indiana, clap for that mother. Anyway, up next, it's the Instagram site spilling tea about all your favorite celebrities. Now our buddy Dax is getting the real dirt straight from the source. Give it up for Dax Holt from the Hollywood Raw podcast. Hi, buddy. Hello. Good morning. Good morning, audience. Hi. Dax, were you able to dance in high school? Yes, of course. <laughs> okay, I, I don't know. I mean, I don't know. I, I was the best dancer in, in the, all the dances. Come on, man. Oh, Everyone. Wow. wow. Yeah. Did you like do, where, did you break dance or what did you do? No, I just enjoy dancing. So like once you enjoy dancing, you know, people want to dance with you. So we had a lot of fun back at the, the high school dances. Okay, hold on a minute. I'm going to, I'm going to email your wife right now. Let me get, uh, uh, please well, send why me. why do you think I have my wife? We met in high school. Oh! oh! Your dance skills got you to the table. <laughs> I love it. Um, hey, uh, big get this week. Tell the folks who you interviewed on the cat on the podcast. Yeah, uh, we had Do, who is the anonymous creator behind Demois, the uh, the Instagram handle that breaks all the juicy gossip from around the world. They have sightings of where celebrities are at. Uh, we've had her on in the past, but it's been like a year since we had her on, so we invited her back. She does not show her face. That is why you see, uh, you know, just the Demois uh, logo there. Uh, but she came on, we talked all about Coachella, because Coachella is obviously the biggest story of the week when it comes to celebrity pop culture. Everyone was there, so many performances, surprise performances, all kinds of stuff. And uh, so we would just talked to her because, again, she gets all the sightings and the, the, the juicy gossip going on. So we wanted to talk about who was cited, what was happening there that maybe wasn't publicized uh, on all the magazines and blogs. And then we keep diverting out of that to, we get into uh, like uh, plastic surgery. We talked about all the new Hollywood hot spots. She's actually releasing an app of where you should go when you're in either New York or LA or I guess kind of anywhere where celebrities are hanging out. So if you want to see celebs, this is kind of the, the, the main spot of where they hang out. I mean, we got into so much um, uh, on this week's episode. I think for, for people that truly love Hollywood and love like the gossip or the entertainment behind necessarily what you see, you'll enjoy this episode. Uh, I would rather walk on my lips than ask an uncomfortable question to you, but I'm going to anyway. Okay. Uh, <laughs> do, you, do you know who she is? Yeah. <gasps> Ooh, you do? <laughs> I do. Uh-huh. <laughs> ha ha have you known her for a while? Um, only through when she had started up Dumois. Oh. I've known her for a, a couple years now. Um, but yeah, I, I, I do know the woman behind it. Uh, oh. She doesn't show her face. Even when yeah. we are not recording, she doesn't show her face. Like, Let me ask you. It's you know always been like that, though. Well, let me ask you, because I, I, I go to the site when I prep for the radio show or this show. Let me ask you, your professional opinion. You come from TMZ. We say it all the time. TMZ is incredibly sourced. You may not yeah. always like, but there, you can't deny. How does she compare to TMZ, Dax? Is she really well sourced? So it's, it's, these are two, you're comparing two different things. Like TMZ, they are breaking the news. They are making sure it's 100% accurate. Her site is like putting up what people are saying. So yeah. if someone sees someone, she puts it up. But she has admitted numerous times, like, these are not verified sources. Yeah. I am letting you know that this story that I'm putting up 
is what yeah. someone is else is saying. So I, that's why it's like two different things. I, yeah, I didn't mean to say sourced. That was my mistake. I just should have just said connected. Is she yeah. as connected? And I think yes i think that she is very connected i think there's a lot of people in hollywood that truly like to break the news or like to see it being put out there so you have a lot of publicists agents managers celebs themselves that are on burner accounts leaking information to her yep. because she's got two million people that follow her instagram account and so when that information goes out there they know that people are going to see it you know you know there's Absolutely. Like some level of oh, it's, it's on Dumois, so it, that makes it cool or, or sneaky or whatever. And so she has a lot of people that put up information from reliable sources. Uh, go ahead and send us some dance video if you would like from your high school days. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I can send you me doing the worm on the dance floor at a birthday party last year. Done, done. <laughs> Thank you, buddy. Give it up, everybody, for Dax Holt. Download, subscribe to the Hollywood Raw podcast wherever you get your podcasts. Do you ever go to Dumas? Yeah, I follow her. Do you? I do. And it's a lot of stuff that she shares on her story are like screenshots of something someone else has sent to her. To his point, it's very different than what you see on other like people, TMZ, stuff like that. But it makes it really fun and interesting. Yeah. <laughs> it's a, yeah. I, I bet she hears from a lot of people. A lot of people. More just for you now. We could soon see the life of Frank Sinatra on the big screen. So Martin Scorsese is working on a film about old blue eyes. And he already knows who will play him, and you can probably guess, because he only works with one person, Leonardo DiCaprio. Um, it would be the seventh time that Martin and Leo would work together. Reports are, now this is what I'm actually more excited about. Reports are that Jennifer Lawrence would also star and she would play Frank's second wife, the legendary Ava Gardner. Now, yeah, close your eyes and just do a split screen in your head. I can see it. I, 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 that makes more sense to me than Leo. Anyway, here's the catch, though. Sinatra's daughter, Tina, uh, has complete control over the estate and hasn't approved the project yet. Hmm. Now, look, that's not to say you can't do an unauthorized movie, right. but if you're Martin Scorsese, I would assume you would want the cooperation mm -hmm. of the Sinatra a state. state. Does that mean, so I, I don't know this, this is a genuine question, does that mean he wouldn't be able to use some of the original music or costuming that maybe was linked to Sinatra? Uh, not necessarily. It depends on if the Frank Sinatra estate still controls the music library. Oh. Not to get too inside baseball, right. but it, I, and I don't think they sold it like a lot of people are doing now. I don't mm -hmm. think like Sony owns it. I think the family still owns it. Okay. So in that case, they would they would need permission. That'd be hard to do a movie without them giving you permission. Then. Yeah, life rights. They would need the life rights to right. do it. Um, I think Ronan Farrow should play Frank Sinatra. What? Why? Gee, I wonder why. Uh, yeah, anyway. Oh. Yeah. Hello. Oh, well, just Google that. You'll see what I mean. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We'll be right back. Back in a moment, everybody. Back after this. We ate some weird stuff back in the day. Coming up in just a little bit, it's our new segment, Retro Recipes. And this time, <laughs> executive producer Jeff. Now we start assembling the cake. Has whipped up a classic made of bologna and cream cheese. Mmm. I just finished my last layer. And a uh, part of my interview with Patrick Duffy, you did not see a great great behind the scenes story and what are we watching this week a documentary from hbo you have to watch what is it you'll find out when we come back It has been a few weeks since we kicked off our new series, Retro Recipes. The first thing we tried was something called, here it is, uh, pie plate salad. It was a disgusting thing made with lemon jello and canned vegetables. Um, I really do, if I think about it enough, I can still taste the awfulness in my mouth. Well, today the segment continues, but with something completely different. No jello, no vegetables. This dish comes this dish comes from the kitchens of the southern U.S. Uh, believe me, my dad's southern. I never had this crap. But anyway, 
and it only uses three ingredients. But you need, you need a little Southern patience to make it. Executive producer Jeff shows us how to make bologna cake. Okay, here are the ingredients for the bologna cake. You need bologna, cream cheese, 12 ounces, so that's one full block and a half block, and it has to be softened. So I let this sit out for a little bit, and then you need seasoning. I'm using the Hidden Valley Ranch seasoning, three tablespoons, and you're gonna mix the cream cheese with the seasoning. The cream cheese and ranch seasoning are in the bowl. Now we're gonna mix it up with our little blender. Of course, by blender I meant mixer. Now here's what it looks like after it's all mixed up. It looks pretty good, smells pretty good. And now we start assembling the cake. So basically this is the frosting for the bologna cake. Time to start assembling. Okay, now the recipe says you pick up a piece of bologna. My hands are clean, don't worry, Jason and Kendall. Put it on a paper towel. Kind of clean off the excess dampness or whatever's in bologna, I'm not really sure. And then start frosting. One piece done, about 30 to go. So you frost each one, put another one on top, frost that, just like a layer cake. Okay, progress check. Uh, we're getting about halfway. Got about half of the meat left. So as you can see, we have, a, we have a few layers there. And don't worry if it's a little sloppy on the, on the edges because you're gonna be covering it all with more of the uh, cream cheese frosting. I just finished my last layer. It's leaning a little bit. I'm gonna have to work on the evenness of my cream cheese, but that's okay, you get the idea. Now I'm gonna frost the outside. And here's the finished product. I must say it was pretty easy, a little tedious. Now we just gotta let it uh, sit in the fridge and firm up and uh, it's ready to eat. So here's a close up. Look at that. Oh, well, yeah, yeah. This is the finished product. Uh, this is Cheese Whiz with paprika on top. Uh, oh, good. We served, added some paprika. Yeah, that's right. Served with delicious uh, Ritz crackers. So um, I got to tell you, I, I, I was feeling decent about this until the beginning, and the studio audience was with me, mm -hmm. especially the youngins in the front row. Mm -hmm. uh, they, when, when Jeff had to pat down the dampness yeah. of the bologna. Yeah. When he had to get rid of the bologna juice is when mm -hmm. I, it kind of lost me. So, um, okay. are you ready? No. Now, uh, the instruction is you gotta cut into this bad boy. You cut into it like a little cake and then you serve it on a Ritz cracker. Um, that's how I'm being told Southern people do this. Now, again, my kinfolk are Southern, and we did not make this, but yeah. They made it in Sweet Home Alabama, so it must be real. Did they make it in Sweet Home Alabama? Yes, okay. when she goes home, her daddy makes a bologna cake. There it is, right there. You see the layers? There we go. I'm not eating that. You are eating that. You are. I don't eat bologna. Okay, well. Cut it's the... against my soul. It's no, you are you don't have a soul. It's fine. There we go. Yeah, yeah. Okay, you do. You have a beautiful soul. Okay, there's a Not fork for, for you. Long. Why okay. do we need a fork? No, to put it on top of the uh, Ritz cracker. Oh my God. Ladies first. No. Yes. <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm not putting all that. Yes, you are. No, and I'll even take the cheese whiz part. No, that's probably the best part. Okay, there we go. Now put that on the cracker. Now hold on. I'll do it with you, Kendall. I'll do I'm it with like, you. I'm like, I'm a little worried. We're on live television right now. No, you know but yeah, I don't. I don't. We want to keep. Okay. Aaron, there's nothing wrong with me. Here What's wrong with you? This is Here, disgusting. Cheers. Here we go. There we go, friend. I don't like the smell. I can't even look at that anymore. You're in it. Girl, this is real good. Oh this is real good. Are you serious? 
That is real good. <laughs> It mm. like actually hurts my feelings. Mm. Like my feelings are hurt thinking about I'll eating that. I'll eat your feelings. <laughs> oh my god. That is real good. No, it's not. Why do you um, like it? Why? Why? Honest to God, why, what you do you what? like about it? First of all, if you like a bologna sandwich, you will love this. And I love no. my childhood memories are uh, sitting on the uh, beaches of Lake Michigan. Uh, and eating a, a white sandwich. bread bologna sandwich oh. made by my mom or my Aunt Char mm -hmm. with some potato chips. Oh, you know, that would be really good, too. <laughs> no. <laughs> Let me tell you how I'm going to elevate this. I know, we got to go, but I'm telling the people how we're going to elevate this. Elevate it? Yeah. You put it's a bologna and cream cheese mix. To quote my southern relatives, uh, you have got to hush. Uh, because... <laughs> So you put you put this and you put one ruffle on top of this. Oh, yeah. no. One ruffle for that texture. And then you know the 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 thing that makes it the best is the ranch dressing uh, oh, flavoring. Oh, oh, that cream cheese. No. Girl, this is my lunch. Oh. We'll be right back. Back in a moment. That was wild. Oh, that was good. Yeah. Yeah. Welcome back. So we have Allie in the front row. She's celebrating her 18th birthday. And it wasn't just me. She had some of the bologna. Uh, and you liked it, didn't you, Allie? It's good. Yes, I'm telling you. You don't have to lie. It's no, okay. she's not lying. <laughs> Anyway, a few weeks ago, you saw my interview with one of my favorite people, TV icon Patrick Duffy from Step by Step in Dallas, and his girlfriend, actress and singer Linda Pearl. Well, here's the deal. This interview was uh, via Zoom. I wish they were here. I hope one day they'll be sitting here. But anyway, I love to tell you behind-the-scenes stories, and this is, a, this is, I think you'll enjoy this. When I first joined in on the Zoom, you get a link, and, you know, it was just Patrick and me together like and I'm in my little radio studio in my house and and I was freaking out like oh my god it's just me and Bobby Ewing uh and <laughs> it's just us and I can ask him anything so you know I had to geek out a little bit and talk to him about my love uh for my beloved television show Dallas I told him a story uh that I often tell the studio audience when they when we do a Q&A every day it's a story about my visit to the city of Dallas for the junket for the reboot of Dallas back in 2012 TNT sent me there that's when I got the chance to meet the one and only Larry Hagman here I am with Larry who played J.R. Ewing on both the original and uh and the reboot now I want to tell you something I'm gonna give you a little story see behind Larry you see a little bit of George Washington you see a painting there I'm gonna tell you about that in a little bit but this was a magical moment and a little bit later in the night, this took place at the house of George W. Bush's neighbor. And we had dinner. Uh, yeah, we had dinner. It was a whole big thing. And we picked the story up from there. Here's a, my conversation with Patrick. I was at the TNT junket uh, for the reboot. Uh, so I met you at the opera house as well for the premiere night. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, down in Dallas. Yeah, that yes. was a... That was a great three years, I must say, uh, for that reboot. I, I will tell you while we're waiting for Linda, it's like real quick, I tell this to my studio audience at the talk show when people ask me funny stories, and I think I have Larry's hat. Anyway, Larry went to that, there was a dinner that TNT threw for all of us on the very last night and uh, at George W. Bush's house. Oh. And, and uh, Mr. Hagman had stayed basically until the very end and he was out at the pool and <laughs> i i don't like to bother people I, I i i get pretty shy and my friend alexis who was with me she said jason you've been waiting 35 years for this go over to mr hagman and say hello so patrick i went over to him and he's standing there with his handler by the pool and <laughs> T tnt had uh taken like a light and shined the dallas logo in the pool and Larry, I, I went over and I said, you know, what the show meant to me, blah, blah, blah. I'll shorten the story. And he, and Larry was very kind. And he's like, well, thank you for being a fan because you afforded me the life that I had. And he stopped yeah. and he goes, can I tell you something? He goes, look at this. 
He goes, look at the money TNT spent on this. He goes, CBS never spent a, 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 this kind of damn money on us. And I just got the biggest kick tickle out of that. He was just pointing out all the stuff that TNT had done that CBS never did. That's, it's CBS, I think we got a bottle of Corbell champagne. That was it, you know. And no, no exclusions on Corbell. I mean, uh, they are the lower end of the champagne list and Larry and I would drink anything but yeah CBS did not go all out although let's face it CBS paid an exorbitant amount for the show on a weekly yeah. basis from there which we all, got our, we all got our cut so in that sense they treated us very very well absolutely and 13 years of absolute gratitude so there you go and that's when Linda joined the Zoom and the interview commenced. But yeah, I tell the story that story. Uh, and Larry used a colorful bit of language uh, when he pointed out the this light. He's looking around. And, and I will tell you, TNT, I've been to a lot of movie premieres in my life. I've been to a lot of big things. This was one of the biggest uh, money spent things I've ever been to with Hollywood. <laughs> uh, it was ginormous, and Larry couldn't have been kinder, and, and, and Patrick, too. He was just a delight. And if you're a fan, like I talked about Taylor Swift, if you're a fan of something and you get to spend time yes. with that person, it's a dream. So I, I never take it for granted. Thank you, Patrick. We'll be right back. Back in a moment. <laughs> a new eye-opening documentary I just watched about the dark side to fast fashion. You know, the uh, there's stores all around that do it. I'm not going to point out any one, but I am going to point out the one that's in this documentary. If you've ever heard of the brand Brandy Melville, it's a clothing brand geared toward teenage girls and young women. It's known for its all. Uh, it's known for its one size fits all system. But this new documentary puts the focus on the shady business practices and a bigger picture of the environmental damage. Take a look. There's a stereotype against Brandy Melville for only hiring skinny white girls. Blonde hair, skinny, small. She's obviously, like, beautiful. The girls would go to the factory where a lot of things are made. China or to Italy. And then the girls would pick out stuff that they like. Then you go into the stock room and you see all the other people who are working there who are not white. are these text messages between the senior leadership at Brandy Melville and the most vile, sexual, racist jokes possible. When I saw him wearing a Hitler outfit, I wasn't surprised. Store style photos were taken every day. Go stand against that wall and pose so I can text it to the founder of the company. Brandy Melville was part of fast fashion and how fast fashion was impacting our environment. Look at that image. I'm going to talk about that in a minute. That image of the shore. Look at that. I'm going to refer to that in just a little bit. Uh, Brandy Hellville and the cult of fast fashion is now streaming on, on Max. So I, I just want to say this. It, it really talks about two things. The toxic nature, the disgusting nature of this company. And they also tackle the problem, the bigger global problem of fast fashion mm -hmm. and what it quite literally is doing to humanity. And I know that sounds like hyperbole and it sounds like I'm being overly dramatic, but it's not. My desire and my wish for this documentary is that it would have been two different things. I wish they would have gone even deeper on the toxic environment of the company and then a separate documentary on what fast fashion does to the world. Mm -hmm. I will briefly talk about what some of the, hi not highlights, but some of my takeaways of both. Let's talk about Brandy Melville. I am 49, I had no idea. I don't think anyone on our staff knew about this brand, nor should we. It was a it was a brand really geared toward young women, and it's I don't think it's in Minneapolis, but it was in uh, New York and uh, uh, in in L.A. And what you discover is, unlike other companies, that when they're busted for something, they're shame. This company has no shame for the fact that all they really want in a customer base, and I'm being blunt for a reason, is they want skinny, very skinny, white women, uh, white young women. And it is illustrated so many times in this. Let me, and don't email me. This isn't about being woke. 
don't even save your fingertips because I will delete that email right away. I'm just telling you, it's not about that. They interview uh, several employees, uh, two young black women who, and I'm going to use the word brainwashed, but they have such devotion to this brand. You feel bad for them. They are made, they are only allowed to work the stock room. They are not allowed on the sales floor. <laughs> and in this documentary, they talk about, it's present day, they're now in their 30s. They said, yeah, and we didn't care. I'm paraphrasing. We didn't care because we wanted to be involved in this brand. Mm -hmm. We wanted to be involved in this. Mm -hmm. So there's, that's one example of the toxic nature of Brandy Melville, the brand. Fast fashion, it will break your heart. Uh, it makes me really never want to buy anything again because you see all of this fast fashion once we discard it after wearing it three times because it's so poor quality we can only wear it three times it quite literally ends up in the ocean it ends up in Ghana where it is it is they try to recycle it but it's never there's such a giant amount coming from the US and Europe that it is impossible to uh, really, really recycle this in mm -hmm. any reasonable way. W women in Ghana are putting 50 pound packs of these clothes on top of their head, carrying them around, causing spinal damage. And then remember I told you to look out, uh, look, uh, remember that shot of the ocean? All of that, all of those clothes are quite literally washing up on the shores of Ghana right. um, because they don't know where to put it. Mm -hmm. The U.S. And, the, and Europe is shipping it to them and they are running out of room. Mm -hmm. So it's just being dumped into the ocean. Mm -hmm. It, very few documentaries make me go, oh, oh, oh. This made me feel all the emotions. It's revelatory, you need to watch it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, you need to watch it. I've read a lot about fast fashion, um, fast fashion specifically. I've read, I've done so many deep dives on it and the companies that promote it and what happens to it. And I do think it's good. I'd love to see a separate one. It's your point. Yeah. I think it's good to incorporate them together because someone might come to it. Absolutely. The company and then find out the bigger environmental issue. And I know we have to go, but unlike other documentaries where you remember the Abercrombie and Fitch documentary where yes. at the end, uh, Abercrombie kind of has a, a, a revelatory moment. And they're like, we shouldn't do this. Let me just warn you, spoiler alert, this company couldn't care less. Wow. And I'm not, I'm, uh, uh, it's not allegedly, they're not changing. They're actually exploding right now in China, mm -hmm. uh, in another market. They've, they've now, they're now in China doing great. They have no, it appears they have no regrets. There is no revelatory, uh, revelatory moment mm -hmm. for them. Um, wow, uh, watch it on Max. We'll be right back, back in a moment. <laughs> It's time to meet the next JVIP of the week. Today, it's Carrie Embers from Lonsdale, Minnesota. She says our show gets her going every morning. Well, Carrie gets a Jason Show mug and is entered to win the monthly grand prize that includes being a VIP guest in her audience, a $150 gift card to Becker Furniture, and a $250 gift certificate to Renew Met Spa. We'll be back after this. Back in a moment. Welcome back. This is Allie. She's just Yay! turned 18. That's right. <laughs> she just turned 18. So right after the show, she doesn't know her friends uh, had planned this whole day. She didn't even know if she was coming here. Uh, chances are she doesn't even know who the hell I am. And uh, Hi, Allie. so <laughs> and now after that last segment, her friends hate me. But I mean, we're good. Yeah. Um, but here's what we're going to do to make it up with her. Uh, we're going to go as soon as the show's done and do everything 18 year old. We're going to go vote on something. Yep. Uh, I'm going to go. Buy, she's going to buy a lottery ticket with yep. me. Go we're going to take her to a casino. No, yep. I mean, we're gonna do, yeah. Smoke some cigarettes. No, no, kidding, no, kidding, not smoking kidding, cigarettes. Kidding, I'm, kidding, I'm kidding. I'm not gonna do that. Anyway. 
One, just one step too far. Tomorrow, uh, our good friend, blogger Lisa Breckenridge is back with another recipe hack you're gonna love. And this time, it's Lazy Man Pasta. Ooh. We'll see what that is. Right now, that's gonna do it for us. If you're watching and you're a kid that's being bullied, you go out there and be yourself because nobody can tell you what, that you're doing it wrong. Have a great day. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you tomorrow. Happy birthday to Allie.